mighty glad to fly. <laughs> when you start looking at 250 size quadcopters, you have a, a lot of choices. This is another one. This is called a GT250. And this one, what kind of makes it special is it has uh, a little spacer that's in here between the, the bottom plate and the middle plate. So I think you can put your ESCs inside there. So anyway, I got one of these. I ordered the red one, and it comes in this fancy box. You know, sometimes you get the rubber, the little anti-static bags, and they're okay. But it's kind of nice that when you get something in a box, it makes you feel like you're actually getting a real product instead of something that somebody threw in a bag sometimes. Anyway, here, let's look at this. It comes with a... Uh, Instruction manual here, which is unbelievable. Because usually these do not come with manuals like every other one I've reviewed pretty much. So, wow, it actually tells you how it's supposed to put together. Let's see here. It comes with, oh wow. Um, yeah, like I said, I got the red one. Has some plates here and some more plates. Let me get this stuff open. This is one thing I was surprised by. This uh, main plate here has a, a power distribution board built into it. So you can hook up all your ESCs here, hook your incoming power back here. Then it also has this uh, TX here, and I would assume this is not for really your transmitter, but rather it's for your uh, video um, transmitter. So you can have your video transmitter in the back, connect it here, and it runs up here to the front where you could plug in, uh, plug in your camera onto this. Well, this isn't too bad. I was Pleasantly surprised by that. <clears throat> well, beyond that, also has the top plate. And like I said, I ordered the red one because I thought the red one looked kind of cool, a little bit more so than the green one, I guess. But this is a uh, fiberglass, so it's not carbon fiber, and you can kind of tell by the way it looks. It's kind of that smoother look to it. Um, but it, it has the anti-vibration plate with the three uh, holes in it, and then these are the spacers I was talking about, and these are made of fiberglass as well. And it looks like they just slip down into the frame on these little notches. This also includes four arms. Two of them are the same, and two of them are, are opposing. Also has a camera mount, and this one actually has legs on it too, which is kind of nice. Then it has these mounts, and they look like they're metal, but I can't. Yeah, they're definitely metal, and they have a little bit different look to them than the standard ones. They got little bumps on the end. That's kind of neat. All right, now to put this thing together. So here's the first part of the frame build. And like I said, this is the power distribution board and it goes down here on the bottom plate. And these arms are attached with two screws and then it has the uh, little pegs up here on the top to help hold it in place. On the front of this, you have the two long poles that go there. Then on this middle plate, it has the arrow which points to the front. And this is gonna slip on here just like this with all the spacers in between it. So here's the bottom portion fully assembled now. And it has these little legs here on the front. And they just kind of snap in to the top and to the bottom here when you uh, put these together. But they, uh, they keep it off the ground just a little bit so you're not landing on the bottom of your um, motors on those screws or anything and, and damaging those up, which is kind of nice. Although you probably won't land like this. You'll probably land more like this and, <laughs> and land rough <laughs> like I do. Anyway, let me get the top. Before I on. finish this upper plate, I was going to show you this. This is a Sony PZ0420, and this is the upper plate. You can see it has these special cutout grooves, which are designed to slip around your Sony camera like this. Of course, you'd have to have some spacers to put inside here to to keep it from you know touching the components on the camera if you wanted to but it's designed to actually hold this full-size camera but this is one problem it's a little tight back here for this camera to fit in here and it's having problems because it keeps bumping on this frame so if you're going to use a full-size camera on here you'd probably be better off taking this and moving this part around to the back and then mounting it this way so it's up in front of the in front of the mounting plate like this just because there's not enough room back there because these little bumps that are sticking out right here. Or you can just get a smaller camera. So here's the completed frame. I like the looks that this has. I like the red, how they kind of highlighted a lot of the arms and these little side plates with the red and the top plate. It kind of gives it more of a unique look than just being standard uh, black. Now it does have this huge opening inside the middle here, which is plenty big for, it looks like even full size ESCs, along with your SN20As. Those would be easy to fit in there. But like I said, it's kind of disappointing the camera mount, uh, the camera can't fit behind the mount, but it has to sit in front of it. Oh well, it's not too big of a deal. And also you'll notice inside here, the, the space inside is a little bit more narrow because of the, um, because of the bottom plate being uh, a little bit higher than normal. So it looks like this is gonna be able to swing six inch props. Here they are uh, sitting, pointing toward each other and you can tell there's, there's enough gap there that they're not gonna hit. Now when you look at it um, up here, let me get this lined up a little bit better, there we go. It's gonna be up above this little area here because it's just, 
the motor will be will lift up the propellers a little bit higher than that but here you can see how it's going to clear that okay you can't have anything hanging out over the edge of that without it hitting it but it should be okay the overall shape itself somewhat resembles the zmr 250. the only difference is the zmr 250's arms are a little bit more angled where these are a little bit more straight out here it is compared to the Terrett 250, and the 250 uh, has a little bit more narrow arms, but it's about the same size as this. Well, they should be because they're both 250s. And even when you hold these up, they should be relatively close to the same. Yeah, they're pretty close. Here, we'll go ahead and get the full weight of this. Comes in about 152.5 grams. Let's get some measurements off of these arms. This bottom arm is coming in about 3.04 millimeters. The bottom plate is about 1.48 millimeters. The middle plate is about 1.46 millimeters. And the upper plate is about 1.49. So one and a half on all the plates, which isn't too bad. Uh, and then this middle area here, we'll see how tall this is. About 21.2 millimeters on the inside up here. And then uh, let's check these this lower area here, just because we can. It comes in about 1 point or 13.15 millimeters, maybe a little less. So that's the uh, GT250. If you have any questions about this, please leave in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And I have a few more videos coming, one on a better speaker upgrade for the Tyrannus and a Eachine 7-inch screen with diversity receiver. But anyway, if you have any questions about this one, this GT250, leave in the comments. Let me know. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.